I'm Dr. Leo Doherty, a physician here of Reproductive Medicine Associates of New Jersey. I see patients in the Somerset and Freehold locations. In vitro fertilization is the process by which an egg and a sperm meet outside of the human body. Uh, in vivo, uh, the, sort of the old-fashioned way, the sperm will find its way and unite with an egg in the f woman's fallopian tube. In vitro fertilization is the process by which the eggs are removed from the ovaries and then sperm is either injected through a process called ICSI or intracytoplasmic sperm injection or uh, allowed to fertilize through what's called conventional insemination where we put a certain number of sperm around each egg and allow uh, fertilization to take place in the laboratory environment. Uh, essentially, the in vitro laboratory is a very fancy artificial fallopian tube environment. So the interactions that normally happen in the fallopian tube happen within the in vitro fertilization laboratory. Ovarian stimulation typically occurs every month in a woman's normal menstrual cycle, uh, where the brain tells the pituitary gland to make two hormones called FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, and LH, luteinizing hormone, in quantities that are sufficient to make one egg develop within the ovary, ovulate, and be available for potential fertilization. The ovarian stimulation that we do for in vitro fertilization involves giving the same hormones, but in higher concentrations to promote the growth of multiple eggs. Once the eggs reach a certain size, just before they would normally ovulate, we do an egg retrieval procedure to withdraw them from the woman's ovaries under anesthesia. There are methods to improve embryo selection, and one of the, one of the biggest game changers in the field has been uh, pre-implantation genetic testing for aneuploidy, or PGTA. That is an embryo biopsy performed in the laboratory that allows us to know which embryos do and do not have the correct number of chromosomes, which is 46 chromosomes. This has revolutionized the field. This is something that we utilize heavily at Reproductive Medicine Associates of New Jersey, and it has allowed us to have excellent success rates transferring less embryos uh, than was historically needed to, to achieve good success rates. So by knowing which embryos are chromosomally normal and, and therefore competent to have a chance to implant and, and uh, develop into a pregnancy, we can better select which embryo to transfer and um, improve success rates across all ages. The general strategy of IVF, which is make as many embryos as you can safely and then select the uh, individual chromosomally normal embryos that are competent to produce a pregnancy and transfer those, has revolutionized the field. Typically, an embryo uh, transfers itself into the uterus from above through the fallopian tube. When we do an embryo transfer in the in vitro fertilization process, the embryo is passed in a catheter through the woman's cervix into the uterine cavity from below. So instead of coming in from above through the fallopian tube, it's inserted through the cervix using a catheter. So um, we typically instruct our patients to arrive with a full bladder to allow us to use a transabdominal ultrasound probe to, to watch the catheter. Uh, be carefully guided through the cervix into the um, endometrial cavity. And then um, it's actually a very cool process. You can see when we push the plunger to, to um, eject the uh, embryo into the uterine cavity, we can see a little flash of fluid on the ultrasound screen. You can see right where um, the embryo will hopefully set up shop for the next uh, 38 weeks. We assess individual patients for their um, IVF protocol based on the quantity of eggs within their ovaries each month. Um, women's born with a fixed number of eggs and gradually over time as she gets uh, less young or older, um, there are less runners in the race monthly for ovulation. So every month um, there is a group of eggs out of the thousands that are present in the ovaries that could potentially grow and develop. Um, we are able, using blood tests and ultrasound, to determine the number of follicles in the monthly race for ovulation and then decide how much of the FSH and LH medications to use to maximize the growth in a safe way. One of the most common misconceptions I hear from patients is that um, by doing IVF, they're going to use eggs that were destined for ovulation uh, sometime in the future, and they, they may go into menopause earlier as a result. Um, uh, I always like to talk about the number of runners in the race for ovulation each month. Uh, every month there is a group of eggs that are destined to either ovulate or get uh, reabsorbed and, and um, essentially disintegrate. So what we do in the IVF stimulation process is rescue the eggs that were destined for um, reabsorption and give them a chance to grow. So every month you're going to either use or lose the runners in the race, and by stimulating the um, additional runners in the race that we're not going to get selected by the women's uh, own hormones, we give them a chance to grow as well.